Hey, this is Arthur Hill, Senior Technical Analyst with StockCharts.com. It is Tuesday, June 26, and you are tuned in to On Trend, the show that is designed to keep you on the right side of the trend. So we had a big move in the stock market yesterday, and we're going to look at how you measure participation after a big move. And then I'm going to show you a way to spot underlying strength or weakness within a sector. We got some really good high-low percent charts to show you. I'm going to go over the state of the market, seasonality, finance, industrials, blah, blah, blah. Then we're going to do the big battle between the finance sector and the healthcare sector. We're going to compare performance. We're going to look at individual stocks. And finally, I'll finish with some stocks to watch. Just a little programming note that I will be out the next two weeks and be back on July 17th. We'll have some pre-recorded content going in the place of On Trend, but the next live show will be on July 17th. Measuring participation after a big move. Whenever we get a big move up or down in the stock market, the first thing I do is I check the advanced decline percent indicators to measure the degree of participation. The advanced decline percent indicators are basically net advances divided by total issues. So use the NASDAQ 100 as an example. You have 100 stocks. So if you have 70 going up and 30 going down, that would be 70 minus 30 is 40. And 40 divided by 100 would be plus 40%, basically. Net advancers, 40%. So what I've done is I've created these indicators. We calculate them and publish them on stock charts. And I've created sharp charts with these indicators in histogram format. And they are available in the written commentary for subscribers. You can click on the chart. You can see the settings. And you can save it to one of your favorites list. So here is the S&P 500 80% indicator. And I set the horizontal lines there at plus 70% and minus 70%. And basically, when you get a move above plus 70%, that shows strong upside participation that's notable. And that's what I call a bullish breath thrust. And you can see we had three of those in May in the S&P 500, two in mid caps and two in small caps. And then if you get a move below minus 70%, that shows broad downside participation. That's a bearish breath thrust. We had one of those in late May in mid caps here and yesterday in small caps. But you can see mid caps didn't have that negative bearish breath thrust and neither did large caps. Large caps actually held up the best yesterday. So basically, we had a lot of strength in May with basically seven total breath thrusts there between S&P 500, 400, and 600. And things kind of slowed down in June. You can see we didn't get back above 70% on the upside, but we didn't go below minus 70% on the downside. But you had an edge to the bulls the first two weeks here, edge to the bears the last two weeks. And I think we're in a, this tells me we're in a corrective environment because the, neither the bulls nor the bears can get the upper hand here right now for the S&P 500. And I'm waiting for that move above plus 70% to signal, hey, we're moving out of this corrective phase and we're getting into a, maybe a trend phase. Because when you get a big surge in upside participation, that's kind of like a rocket lifting off. You get that up thrust that's needed to escape gravity. Now, until we get out of that correction, though, we could see that move below minus 70%. And that would suggest that maybe the correction is going to extend or deepen into a pullback. Because remember, corrections can be sideways, time-wise, or they can be price-wise and move down. So again, small caps are leading on this decline. And they were, uh, they were leading on the way up in the first three weeks of June. But now the last three days are leading on the way down. And until we see a bullish breath thrush from two of these three, I think we're still in corrective mode. Now, as I said, we also calculate these indicators for the sectors and we can see which sectors were leading on the way down, which ones were holding up the best when the market was weak. And if we look here, we've got the finance sector. Look at all those down days in 80% over the last two weeks. 
Same with industrials, a lot of big down days. So a lot of downside leadership there, if you call it leadership, in industrials and finance. And then we look at technology, took a big hit yesterday, minus 92%, one of the leading sectors on the way down. Materials, except for Friday, have been quite weak over the last two weeks. Energy has been mixed. Consumer discretionary has been fairly weak, and it got hit pretty hard yesterday. Healthcare got hit pretty hard yesterday. And then we can see staples held up over the last few days, and utilities very strong over the last two weeks with those AD percent indicators. Spotting underlying strength or weakness, and we're going to use the sectors and high-low percent indicators here. All right, so this next chart is going to show the high-low percent indicators for the S&P 500 and the nine-sector SBDRs. Sorry, I haven't got around to adding REITs yet, uh, even though they're one of the strongest sectors along with utilities over the last few months. But look at here at the S&P 500. I was looking for this move above plus 10% to say, okay, maybe this correction is ending. And we got that in the early part of June, but then right back down below 10% and still in corrective mode. So you can see there's just not that much leadership within the S&P 500. We're getting leadership from selection, select consumer discretionary stocks, a lot of technology stocks, and some healthcare stocks, but that's about it. So if we look at these high-low percent indicators, we can see there was technology leading May and June. And we even had some leadership from consumer discretionary in early June. But here's what caught my eye yesterday. High-low percent moved to basically minus 9% for the consumer discretionary sector. So a lot of new lows popped up in this consumer discretionary sector. And that tells you that within the sector, there's some weakness. We look at finance, and it has really done nothing of significance since March. All right, you had a couple pops above plus 10%. Uh, but nothing to write home about. So, you know, it's basically some of the brokers and the exchange type uh, a, a, uh, stocks like ICE and CME and NASDAQ that are doing good, but some of the big banks are very weak as we'll get into. Healthcare, got some new highs there in June, so it's still doing okay. But industrials, you know, the new lows creeping in the last five days. Materials, nothing going there since basically January. All right, so this is a drag of a sector. It's only 3% of the S&P 500, so it doesn't matter that much. Energy leading in April and May, flatlining basically in June here, but not, you know, no new lows yet, so it's okay. Consumer staples perked up over the last two weeks or so. You can see that high-low percent indicator moved above plus 10%, which was my basically threshold to get bullish or bearish on this indicator. Notice that I don't use the zero line to get my bullish and bearish threshold because you get too many whipsaws. You can see it's above and below zero a lot. So you have to put that bullish threshold a little bit above plus 10% and that bearish threshold a little bit below minus 10%. And then utilities, not much going here. You know, you're getting a few new highs, but not like we saw back in August, September, October, November, but still, you know, more bullish than bearish. But again, the main point is here, look at that new low spike in consumer discretionary, not a good sign. The state of the market, and here I'm going to look at IJR, QQQ, the, some of the key sectors and some seasonality. All right, we'll start with the S&P 500 SPDR, SPY, and I'm going to click this inspect button up at the left-hand side at the top, and there's where we started the year. Well, we'll call it, there it is, December 29th was the last day of 2017. So, so far year to date, we're up about 2.61%. But, you know, look at how we got there. Big move up, big move down. Don't need the inspect, so I'll turn it off. Another big move up, another big move down, and then working our way higher. And this is a well-defined uptrend here. Channel, wedge, really doesn't matter. 
It's a lower trend line that's key, not the upper trend line, which makes it a wedge or a channel. But you can see this lower trend line comes in around 270. And look at that low for May. So if we break that May low, then we have some problems or an uptrend reversal in the SPY. Now below, I've got the E-mini here. And I was looking at this pullback like the previous pullbacks, but now it extended further. And I think we need to get above 27.75 to end this pullback and start another little upswing. Now we're also going to look at IJR and QQQ. So here's IJR and both of these had big runs and they're both still up like 10% year to date and leading the market. But, you know, look at this move, 77 to 87, 12.7%. We've got a pullback working. And so now I need to start estimating support and resistance. And the way I do that is I look for a little consolidation that would probably mark support. And then I try to confirm it with the Fibonacci retracements. And there you can see that 38 to 50% retracement zone and that little consolidation coming in around 82, 83. So that would be the first, first support level to watch. Now, keep in mind, this is a guesstimate. All right. I do not think Fibonacci numbers are magical when it comes to the market. All right. You have 38.2% and 61.8%. Charles Dow advocated one third to two third as far as secondary price movements that retraced a portion of the primary up move or down move. And so in between both of those, you have 50%. And so 38% is pretty close to one third, pretty close. You know, we're playing with uh, shotguns here. We're not pinpointing. And 61.8% is pretty close to two thirds. And it just happens to be the numbers that are on this tool, 38 and 61.8. And so I know that's around one third to two thirds. So when we get to this 50% area, I become, I get on alert because that's a potential reversal zone when you've retraced half of the previous move and you're coming into support. And that's when I go on alert to look for some signs of strength that might lead to a reversal of the pullback. So the point of IJR and QQQ is that they became extended and they're ripe for some sort of corrective period. You have a big move, you're allowed, you're entitled to a correction. The S&P 500, on the other hand, remains what it seems like to be a 2018 correction. It's going on six months now. All right, so S&P 500 is going nowhere. And I'll show you that's because of industrials and finance. Uh, and then you got the two leaders that are ripe for a correction. And so you can see that support zone that I'm marking for QQQ comes in around 166 to 168 and a half call it. And so that's the first level to watch. So looking at this perf chart for the 10 sector SBDRs, I'm going year to date. And you can see you can go to the slider down there at the bottom right, you can right click and you can set a predefined period. And I've selected year to date. And we can see it's pretty much a two horse race, technology and consumer discretionary. And we can see what's weighing on the market Financials are down and industrials are down 4.5%. Consumer staples are also a fairly big sector. I think they're the sixth largest sector. So they're weighing year to date, even though they've gotten a bounce over the past four to five weeks, but still weighing. And basically you take these six sectors here and you got three up, three down, and no wonder the S&P 500 is up just a little bit. All right. Other parts of strength we're seeing surprisingly in healthcare. And that's the sector I'm pretty much focused on. But you can see the market's been split and that's why we're kind of just moving sideways. So with the market moving sideways with finance and industrial showing some pretty serious weakness and undermining the market. And then we've got seasonality coming in. All right. And we got the market blindsided a bit yesterday. So everything is kind of building up to a summer of discontent. And then you look at the seasonality chart for the S&P 500 and you can see July, it's up 53% of the time. It's a, it's a flip, coin flip. And the average gain is 0.5%. August is up 58% of the time, but the average gain is actually a small loss. And then September is the worst month. But you know, with these seasonality things, people may forerun it. 
All right. And maybe we'll get it in July and August. I don't know, but you can't really use seasonality and sentiment for timing. But when it does jibe with the undercurrents and the weakness we're seeing within the stock market, it does open the door or reinforce the, the uh, idea that we're going to have a correction in the summer. And then the other point is bonds, because bonds are the ultimate safe haven. And if you look at a 20 year seasonality chart for bonds, you can see that bonds perform very well in the summer. Look at that July bonds up 68% of the time, August up 74% of the time. So this tells you that money does seek out safe havens for some reason in the summer. And that further adds to the argument that we could get a corrective or an extended correction or choppy action or even a decline in the stock market over the next two months. So now we're going to have the big battle, the big face off, the finance sector versus the healthcare sector. We're going to look at the charts. We're going to look at some perf charts to compare the stocks and we're look at some individual charts to compare the stocks individually. All right. So this first chart shows the year to date performance for the top 10 stocks in the finance sector. And it is not a pretty picture. All right. First of all, you can see that nine of the 10 components are down year to date. Even American Express is down a 0.05%. Not much, but it's not up. The only one that is up is Charles Schwab, a discount broker at 4.35%. And look at the leader on the way down. Goldman Sachs down 12.5%. Citigroup down 11%. Wells Fargo is actually one of the stronger stocks over the last two months. But over the last six months, it's still one of the weaker stocks. And then we can see Morgan Stanley down almost 8% and even Berkshire down 6%. So a lot of underlying weakness in the large cap financials. And this is a big issue for the stock market, you know, for the S&P 500. No wonder it can't go anywhere. Look at these uh, the performance for the top 10 stocks. Now, if we look at the performance for the top 10 stocks in the healthcare sector, it looks a little bit different. We've got basically seven up and three down. Johnson & Johnson down 11%, AbbVie down 2%, and Bristol-Myers down almost 10%. But we've got seven leaders there in healthcare. United Health, Pfizer, up a little bit though, Merck up 10% year to date, Amgen up 8%, Medtronic up 8%, and Abbott up 8%. So clearly, money is preferring the healthcare sector in 2018 over the finance sector. And if I look at one sector that still looks okay, where, say, technology looks vulnerable to further rest, consolidation, correction, healthcare's got a pretty fresh breakout. So if we look at the chart here, We can see uh, five components that I picked out for healthcare, and so I'm going to show the finance sector with five components. Now, I don't use the 200-day moving average as a support or resistance level. It's just kind of a general guideline on the direction of the trend. You're above it, you have a general uptrend. You're below it, you have a general down down trend. All right, you know, it, it yeah it marks support here in February, but then it broke in March and above it in April and blah 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 up and down. So you know. It marks support a couple times good and then nine times not good, I think, as far as the only uh, index that works for the 200-day moving average would be the S&P 500. But anyhow, look at the, looking at XLV here, there's a breakout above resistance here, and it's above the 200-day. So no worries here unless it closes below uh, 83 or below that 200-day. Then we have to reevaluate health care. All right, but when we look at these top five stocks I picked, four of the five are above the 200 day. That would be Pfizer. You know, it's not an exciting stock, but it's holding up really good. It's up, you can see it's up three of the last five days here, and it's still holding its advance. And you could probably mark support there around 35 and a half or so. And then we look at Merck, and it had the surge and breakout, a triangle and a breakout, and now it's consolidating again. And if healthcare continues, I would expect it to continue moving higher. Here is Lilly. I haven't covered Lilly in a while. 
Uh, but, you know, it got the breakout in April, like a lot of the other healthcare stocks. Pull back, another breakout there, and kind of moving flat, like Merck, but I would expect a continuation at some point. Amgen, kind of gone nowhere for over two weeks, but still holding up well. And as long as the sector holds up, I'd expect Amgen to move to new highs. Now, here's the wild card pick, Kiliad, which is, of course, the big biotech that's had some issues. Because, look, peaked here in January, gap down, big volume on this gap down. So maybe it was a selling climax. And then kind of filled the gap and had a pretty nice move there in the early part of June and then moved sideways. But the market was hit hard yesterday and Kiliad was basically unchanged. It held up really good. And big biotechs are making a bit of a comeback over the last few weeks. And so if Kiliak can break above 72 and a half, I think that is going to be bullish for the stock. So these are four stocks that are in uptrends with breakouts and one that may be about to turn up and break out. So healthcare is looking okay. Now, if we change to finance, which is my next chart here, you can see that XLF definitely doesn't look as good. All right, it's below its 200-day moving average. You can see that that is a new closing low for 2018. That was yesterday. Already got some bars for today. And we can see that Goldman Sachs, that's a new low for 2018. It's just been lower lows since March. So if Goldman Sachs is going down, that's got to be a negative for the market because, I mean, if Goldman can't make money, who can make money? All right, then we look at J.P. Morgan, new low for 2018, not doing good. Bank of America, breaking down a new low for 2018. And Citigroup, all right, all five of these have lower lows and new lows for 2018. So this is clearly one of the weakest sectors out there, and you really can't expect the market to take off. You know, maybe it can tread water as far as the S&P 500 is concerned, but it can't take off with this kind of weakness in the finance sector. So you may be wondering where I found the components for these sectors. And I go to the Sector SBDR website. There you can see the URL at the top, sbdrs.com. And I ticked in for the finance sector and the holdings. And there you get the holdings and the weights. And I think it's very important to know the holdings, have an idea of the weightings, because you can see these top five stocks account for the lion's share of the ETF. All right, that's 22%, call it 30, 37, like 42% for these five stocks. You can also just go up here and go to ETFs and you can pick another one if you want to see some of the other sector holdings. If you have any questions or comments or feedback, please send an email to askarthur at stockcharts.com. I cannot answer all questions, uh, but I will definitely read them. And especially if you have some feedback or if you don't understand an issue or a technique or a strategy, those are always great questions and it gives me ideas for future shows. So please send an email. Next, we're going to move to stocks to watch. And I've got a few healthcare stocks as well as a technology, sorry, a, an industrial stock. All right, so first up, I've got some of the gaming stocks. This would be Electronic Arts, Activision, Take Two. And they are holding up pretty well. You can see they're definitely leaders overall. Look at Electronic Arts today, 52 week high there in June pull back what looks like a bull flag and is up today. So a breakout there would extend the uptrend. We look at Activision, a similar pattern, not quite as strong because it didn't hit a 52 week high, but it's a bull flag and a breakout there would be bullish. And then take two, all right, has got a bull wedge, if you will, and trying to break above that upper trend line. So break above 120 opens the door to new highs. And then we go over to Nintendo, and it's a do not touch. All right, clearly the weakest of the four, breaking down to new lows and well below that 200-day moving average. 
Next up, we have Henry Schein, and I highlighted this stock yesterday in the Market Watchers Outlook show with Tom Boley. And again, this is not on trend, all right? Don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not trying to say this is on trend. The reason I say it's not on trend is because it's not in a long-term uptrend. 50 days is below the 200-day, but what I see here is a nice big move, a correction back to that 50 to 62% retracement area, 50 to one-third, basically, and a nice little bounce, a pullback, and a high-volume breakout there. And this is part of the medical devices group. So a high-volume breakout looks bullish for this stock in a strong group. Next up is United Technologies. And what caught my eye here was how well they held up yesterday. All right. So I originally posted this flag with UTX, but it didn't work out. We needed the bounce to get that flag going. And instead, we broke support, but now we're bouncing back. So the 50 days above the 200 day, this was a 52 week high. So I think if we can break out at 126, that would be positive for United Technologies. Next up is Republic Services, and I highlighted this one a week ago. And this is a classic cup with handle. There's the cup part. There's the handle, and we're breaking out. And look at that good volume over the last few weeks. So 52-week high. In June, this is one of the stronger stocks in the market overall. Now, Allergen was on the list before I saw this decline today. So it looks like this double bottom breakout is failing. And this is the trouble with picking bottoms. All right, there's the double bottom. And there's the gap in the breakout. And it looked like we were getting the flag breakout, but now it's clearly failed. All right, so this one is back to the drawing board. Take it off the watch list. I'm not interested in it anymore because it has failed. All right, if it doesn't act the way you expect it to act, you need to move on. All right, find something that is working instead of and discard something that is not working or do more of what works and less of what doesn't work. So here's Anthem, and this one is on trend more or less. I think the long-term trend is up. I'm using the PPO to define this long-term uptrend, and it's positive when the 50-day is above the 200-day. And you can see we got this big surge here and a very tight flag, and that looks like a bull flag, and we break out. That opens the door to more new highs for Anthem. Moving over to my next page, we have Medtronic. And this one's been on my watch list for a little while now, MDT. A big gap and breakout there. And it looks like a big surge and some sort of a pennant consolidation. And it's strengthening within that pennant. Held strong yesterday, up today. And if we can get a breakout there at 87.60, I think that is going to be bullish for Medtronic. And Ross Stores, still liking them. Uh, it doesn't get any more domestic than a store in the U.S. that sells basically clothing. They are a discount clothing. They sell name brands at a discount. But kind of a, a rounding. It's not a rounding bottom because it's after an advance. Uh, I'm not sure what the pattern is. But it's a big consolidation within an uptrend. And you got the breakout, the little flag. Another little breakout, but this one, you know, is near a 52 week high. Look at that price relative. That's a 52 week high. So it is showing relative strength. So I do like Ross stores. All right. So that concludes this edition of On Trend. Thanks very much for watching. I'll be back in three weeks, actually, on July 17th. So thanks very much for tuning in and be sure to stay on the right side of the trend.